welcome everyone. Thank you so much for coming to Carbon Tax Return Lessons from BC's First Five Years. We're really excited to join with the Climate Desk and Bloomberg BNA to bring this briefing to you tonight. Let me tell you a little bit more about Climate Desk. These are our partners, and the Climate Desk Live is basically a reality-based briefing series sponsored by Climate Desk. It's been five years since the province of British Columbia introduced a carbon tax. To explore the lessons learned from this innovative strategy in reducing carbon pollution, Climate Access, Climate Desk and Bloomberg BNA hosted a lively panel in Vancouver on March 27th. The carbon tax, levied at the pump and other places, started out at $10 per metric ton of carbon dioxide equivalent emissions and then gradually rose to $30 per metric ton, which is where it is today. That amounts to about $0.07 cents per liter of fuel, or $0.25 cents per gallon. The tax has been frozen at that amount by the current government. There has been some $5 billion in revenue so far, and because the tax is revenue neutral, all of that has gone back to you or people in British Columbia, so more than $3 billion has been returned in the form of business tax cuts, along with $1 billion in personal tax breaks, nearly a billion in low-income tax credits to protect those for whom rising fuel costs might actually create the most hardship. So this tax could be like a totally bad thing for you if you drive one of these, but, you know, if you don't, this might save you money, okay? Um, so with that, let's hear what the panel thinks about how this has worked out over the first five years. Well, it worked. Fossil fuel consumption in BC is down, and greenhouse gas emissions are down. The GDP in British Columbia is up, and the population is up. So those are the four basic stats. The economy hasn't suffered in terms of the relation of rest of Canada. In fact, we've in some cases done better than the rest of Canada. Uh, so it's not a job killer. But I say it's proven successful not just because it's a price on carbon, but also because there were a whole suite of other policies that came along with it. So things like uh, expansion of transit. Well, I'm, I'm very much a supporter of the carbon tax. I think it's having great re results. <clears throat> I'm supportive of alternative energy. I'm supportive of, of uh, energy conservation. They're all having an impact, and I think uh, it's, it's, it's nice to, to talk about some of the successes here in the carbon tax tonight. According to the Sustainable Prosperity Think Tank, British Columbia's introduction of the carbon tax was followed by a fuel consumption drop of 17.4% per capita. And uh, that, as we've heard, uh, allowed the province to have uh, Canada's lowest income taxes. So one is start it low. Like what we did, $10 and then $5 increments per year. And if they had continued it, it would be up to 50 soon. Secondly, um, I really believe that starting at revenue neutral was crucial because once it was put in place as revenue neutral, uh, the government couldn't just rip it out. Start it with the first chunk being revenue neutral, then the second chunk I would start putting towards those um, projects, those things that will reduce carbon and make it highly visible. People will accept taxes if they understand the benefit that they get from it. The social justice aspect, I think, is one of the challenging things is because with the carbon tax as it is today, there's a low income tax credit, but as the tax has uh, increased, um, more lower income folks are falling through the cracks. I think there needs to be an ongoing education campaign put into it. What we have is the liquefied natural gas proposals. I think what's being touted as a, an incredibly good tax uh, in this province, and it may well be on its face by itself, uh, all of that has to be balanced against what's being uh, attempted to be brought into this province. Clean energy is, is not alternative energy anymore. It's, it's an absolute core business in the world. And this is driving more and more and more development, competing against coal plants, and gas plants and oil and oil and, and nuclear. 